Hi there, I'm Ray Zhao, a final year PhD student at the University of Edinburgh. In this video, I'm going to introduce our paper, Dr. Aid, Supporting Data Governance Rule Compliance for Decentralized Collaboration in an Automated Way. As we all know, terms and conditions widely apply. They also apply for research data for data use. Here are some examples we can find on the internet. I highlighted the most informative part in different colors. As we can see, they only comprise of a small amount of a whole sentence. The issue becomes larger if we consider a decentralized collaboration environment, where the data users are from different institutes. They may collaborate closely or they may not. As a result, they may use data from previous users or they may fetch data directly from the original data source or they may combine the data from previous users. Therefore, when checking the compliance for the data use rules, or when we try to derive the data use rules for outputs, the issue becomes really complicated because the rules may be merged, or they may have been changed because of the change of the corresponding data. Facing that, we identify the following issues. Personnel scattering, rule propagation, rule diversity, dynamic rule application, and rule combination separation, which can be considered in two halves, rule combination and rule separation. With these issues in mind, we look at the related research. We can find in this table extracted from our paper that none of the related research can deal with all the identified issues. Our work provides a solution to all these issues that forms the Dr. 8 framework, short for Data Rule 8. Similar to related research, we also extract the information from the data flow and use that to direct how we perform reasoning on the rule flow plane. Different from most related research, our rule language supports obligations instead of simply access controls. It supports multi-input, multi-output processes in multi-stage data flow graphs. It can derive the data use rules for the output data. So the outputs of a workflow can be reused by other people while keeping the compliance check working without intervention. I'm going to introduce the rule language, the system architecture, and the evaluation we performed. Due to time constraint, I'm not going to talk about the very details. Please consult the paper if you're interested. Our rule language contains two parts. One is the data rule and the other is the flow rule. This figure shows some examples of how a data rule looks like. It basically contains an attribute and an obligation construct. Each data rule contains several attributes and several obligations and they are used during reasoning when we encounter the flow rules. As we can see in this figure, the attributes and obligations correspond to the natural language sentences, but with a more formal representation. In this slide, we can see an example of flow rules. It corresponds to the P1 process we have shown previously. It basically states that the information from input port named input1 propagates to both outputs, which are named output1 and output2. For the first output, output1, it, it removes some information from the data, and therefore in the flow rule, it states that it deletes the relevant information from the data rule. For the second output, it changes the content of the data, and therefore the flow rule states that it changes the content of the data rule. Therefore, after performing the reasoning, we can obtain the data rules for both outputs. As we can see in this slide, they have different contents, and they correspond to our intention. We built a prototype system, and here is system architecture. We use provenance as the lingua franca for different underlying systems, and extract the data flow graph from the provenance. We support two different problem schemas at the moment. One is S-Prof and the other is CW-Prof. We choose them because they correspond to the two major workflow execution system types, file-oriented and data streaming. 
we annotate the provenance information with some extra annotations, which contains the data rules and the flow rules because they do not exist in the provenance at the moment. And then we call the reasoner, which is built using both Python and Prolog. The Prolog part performs the reasoning of the situation calculus formalization of the rule language through Golog. The reasoning result contains two parts. One is the activated obligations, which are stored to the obligation store. The other is the derived data rules, which are stored back either to the provenance or to the external annotation. The user can further examine the obligation store to check what obligations he or she still has to be dealt with. We performed evaluation to our framework in three aspects. One, we perform a system evaluation on real-life workloads and their corresponding data use rules. Two, we compare the rule language with related research. Three, we evaluate the language capability on more real-life data use rules. This figure shows the result of calling the reasoner for the cyclone tracking use case. This figure shows the saved activated obligations in the obligation store. The, these two figures show data flow graph. For the first one is the original data flow graph without the rules annotated. The second figure shows the data flow graph with the reasoning results. We can see the extra annotations and they are the data rules and the flow rules and the activated obligations. This table shows the result of the third evaluation. As can be seen in the last line, our rule language is able to model 90% of all the action rules and 74% of total rules. This result is very promising because our rule language and our framework is the first one that deals with multi-input, multi-output, multi-stage data flow graphs. Please consult our paper if you want to learn more of the details. Of course, our current work contains limitations, and we, we expect some future work too. They are summarized in this slide. So, as a summary, I have briefly explained our framework called Dr. Aid. Its features are summarized in this slide. Most of them are discussed just now, some of them are not. But all of them are covered in the paper. Please come to the paper if you are interested. And that's all. Thanks for listening. Hope you enjoyed the talk. Please don't hesitate to contact me if you have further questions.